Hmm, ginawanya kia kinain ni Ib. Tapos si Ib ginising si Adam. Siguro katatapos lang kumain ka rin. So kinain ni Adam. Then Malis was born. Who is this stupid God? Stupid talaga itong putang akong ganun. You created some, something perfect and then you think of a, an event that would have and destroy the quality of your work. How can you rationalize a God? Maniwala. Oh, ikaw. I mean, maniwala ka. Hmm. Kaya ka sabi ko siya, maniwala niya. No. So tayo ngayon, all of us are born with an original sin. Ang original sin, at I said, ano man yan? Was it the first kiss? O, what was the seed? Bakit original? Nasa home ka pa, may kasalanan ka na. Ni, tsuk-tsak mo lang yung nanay pati tatay mo. Hindi, wala ka bang kasali? Tapos ngayon, may original sin ka. Panginang klase. Anong klase yung reliyon yan? O yan ang hindi ko matanggap. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, and my dear sons and daughters, we are desiring a visitation from God. We are desiring a revival in our land. But God sees this abomination in the country. And we are praying. Our prayers are not enough. Because we are just simply praying professional prayers. A one minute prayer for sins is not enough. You need to throw yourself on the floor, on your face, weeping and crying, mourning and crying for the sins of the land. Just gathering once a year to weep and pray is not enough. It must become a lifelong thing until the glory of God is restored back. Until the abomination is removed from our midst. Till then, you cannot stop your tears. You should not hold back your tears. You should not hold back from moaning. You should not hold back sitting in sackcloth and ashes. You should not. This is not the time for fun and games. This is not the time for vacation. It's not time because we are still in a battle. When you have such exceedingly great and precious promises and they have not come to pass yet, how much more you should contend for your destiny instead of just giving it up you don't give up you don't give up because you have a call until Philippines becomes a praise and a sign and a wonder for the rest of the world you should keep on contending for your destiny. You don't let your guts down. You should stand in the gap, bend your knees, fall on your face, weep and cry and pray. If you don't do that, then the wickedness will overtake you and we will lose our inheritance. Uproot all the false prophets from your country. Uproot all idol worship from your country. Uproot every false religion. Uproot everyone who is a false believer. Uproot 
every false apostle, false prophets, false pastor, false teacher, uproot them and sanctify the land, purify the land for a mighty visitation of the glory of God. You heard how God sees. How are you going to respond now? What are you going to say? Raise up a prayer watch exclusively for your president. Stand guard. Intercede for him day and night. A prayer watch should be raised up. A prayer watch should be set up to pray for your president continuously that the evil influences, witchcraft influences, black magic influences will not surround him but they will be broken so that the angels of God can go and minister to him and speak through him Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I see many, many saints coming down in our midst right now. All those who are sincerely weeping, all those who are receiving those tears from the angels, these saints are going to work together with you. They are going to pray together with you. They are going to intercede together with you. They are going to help you to intercede for the land. They're going to help you to weep and burn for this land. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Whoever is worthy. Whoever has found favor in your eyes. Whoever has poured their hearts and their spirits to weep and pray. I pray the angel will pour these tears into their eyes. And when they receive the tears, let them tangibly feel a drop of the heavenly tears, the spirit of supplication, the spirit of intercession, the spirit of mourning being poured, being poured over them. Let them feel this anointing come all over them. I see an evil appointed over this land that it's slowly going to stretch its right hand and its right leg to grab your nation and to spew the dragon stretching out its right hand and left hand forward to lay and put its claws into this nation that she may spew a kind of a dark cloud dark fumes to come over the land. This evil has been appointed by the enemy against your nation. So the Lord says unto you, what you have begun today, let it not just end today, but let it be your lifestyle lifestyle to stand in the gap to intercede to mourn for the sins and abomination of this land again and again I am hearing this coming in my spirit pray for your president raise up a prayer watch do not take this lightly don't take this lightly. For great abomination will come out through him. The spirit 
that is in the dragon will be transferred to him if a prayer watch is not put around him strong intercessory groups 24 hour intercessory group should be raised up to stand guard stand watch over your president and also to specially pray for very chief and important key christian leaders in this country for the enemy is also has a target and assignment against them to bring upon them a spirit of letharginess a spirit of drowsiness and a spirit of confusion that will cause them to be diverted from pursuing the call of god for the nation from contending for the destiny and also to raise up a spiritual letharginess a lukewarmness so raise up a watch make a list of the key christian leaders all over the philippines and pray for them pray for them my dearly beloved sons and daughters will you covenant with god that from this day onwards you are going to pray every day like how you have prayed right now if you are willing to make that covenant lift up your right hand before the throne of god and you show your right hand to the living god you show your right hand to the angels and to the saints who are standing in our midst and you make your declaration to them you open your mouth now and you tell them question is about the false prophet is there any link between the false prophet and catholicism and the pope and if not where do you see catholicism and the pope in the last days and relation with israel and also any revelation have you had about the trumpets that start i think in 2011 as the lord showed you what the meaning of those trumpets were are they heralding just what's coming to pass or i answered the last one It's not like that, you know. No, I know. <laughs> I think that is your subject. Yeah. No, that's yours. Uh, I, I, I will say this: the um, the ground rules were questions about what we had taught, not <laughs> stuff we don't know. <laughs> uh, but. Go ahead and answer that for him. That's good. I think there were several parts in his question. Certainly, the Catholic Church, or rather the Pope, hmm. will play a major role, especially his present Pope, in being like the false prophet, who will partner with the Antichrist. See, the Antichrist needs a false prophet. will do great signs and wonders 
If he's going to make the world to worship the beast, worship is something that is religious. So it must be a religious man who will make to worship. If you look at the present scenario that's taking place in the world, many Protestant leaders, Pentecost leaders, are now trying to make alliances with the Pope. This has never happened with the former Pope Benedict or with the other Pope John Paul, who was more charismatic than any of the Popes in the history of the Catholic Church, but only with this present one, Francis, who seemed to be like a friend to everybody. You know, last year, in the month of March, I was in uh, Tennessee, Nashville, for a conference among broadcasters. And I was sitting in the meeting and listening to one, uh, I, don't, I can't remember what the talk was all about, but suddenly the Holy Spirit began to show me this was before the Pope Francis was elected. So the Lord spoke to me who the next, the, some signs of who the next Pope is going to be. So I wrote it down all in my note. What are the characteristics he will have one by one by one. And when Pope Francis was elected, and, over, and after that, his works and what he has been doing, when I check with what I've written, they tell it straight to straight that this is the man that God spoke. And he certainly will be like the false prophet who will align with the Antichrist. So that answers one part of your question. What's the other part? The, um, the trumpet sounds that have been going on around the world that you actually have also in your video. I think it started, I think, in 2011 when we got all the sinkholes, etc. But has the Lord gives you any revelations? What are those trumpet sounds? Are they, They're not the seven trumpets, I don't think, in Revelations. Mm -hmm. You know, but what are they heralding? Is it it's just the end times? Is that what's happening? You know. These are just some signs in the heavens that are taking place. Now, I don't have uh, more insight into that. But what I do know is these are signs. See, the scripture says there will be sign in the heavens. You know, after um, we finish our conference in Israel in the month of June this year, we came back and I spent a few days in Singapore and on July the 8th I was sitting in a home and reading the newspaper at about 7.30 in the evening suddenly I heard the sound of a shofar hmm. and I, it was so distinct, so clear, very very audible coming from far away place three times I heard the sound of the shofar being blown so I thought that some Christians living nearby are blowing the shofar. That was a mistake I made. I should have come out of the house to see. And I just kind of brushed it away. A few days later, one of our viewers wrote me a mail saying that she, this is a young girl from southern India, and on July the 8th, about the same time, she heard the sound of a shofar being blown. When she wrote that, I thought, I suddenly remembered what I heard. So then I knew this was a supernatural sound. On that very day, Israel launched the war against Gaza. On July the 8th, they launched the war. Hmm. So then I understood, because when we were in Israel, I had a visitation from Michael and he explained to me about the plans Michael and his angels have made to aid the Israeli defense forces how to save Israel. They, they already made a plan. And I saw all the chariot stations all around Israel, chariots and horses all over the mountains of Israel, that they were going to protect Israel and also help the Israeli army and its soldiers from great destruction. Yeah. So, because the sofa was sounded, 
they blow the shofar, signifying now the war will begin. So that part I know, but this sound of shofar and trumpets that are sounded all over the world, I believe are signs that God is showing to us now. What will eventually come to pass when the great trumpet is blown before the rapture takes place? Thank you. One of the things he's shown me in that is pretty basic, but all of creation is groaning under the weight of generations of sin and awaiting the coming forth of mature sons. Uh, that's what God's been speaking to me in that midst. But also, uh, if we look at the physics or the science of this, I mean, the, the shift in the earth, the magnetic shift in the tectonic place, things that are happening, again, really speaks to me that the creation is groaning. It's had enough. So that's part of what he's shown me. <laughs> Just about, I'm sure a lot of people want, we know about the blood moons and what it's just, you know, they, the ones that just came to pass. And what did, what did that represent to you? And the ones that are coming, that are, there's still more blood moons coming for next year. I didn't quite hear clearly what you said, you know. Talking about the blood moons? Oh, blood the blood moons. moon. Ah, uh, I have no idea about the blood moon. Maybe I will... No, My brother can explain something about no, Blood Moon. Brother Mark Biltz wrote a good book on that. Yeah. I, really. Um, there's a brother back there, Reshma. He, he's got a question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the back, our, okay. our Jewish brother. That's for you. Hi. You heard that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we hear of near-death experiences and and then yourselves, visions, and things like that in heaven. Are there any stories of Catholics dying, coming back, where they have an experience with Mary, where she's very prominent, as the Roman Catholic Church teaches? Is Mary, in your experiences, pretty much just another person in heaven? or? Is she at all in a, a prominent role as some teach? You are a Catholic, no? No. Didn't you say you were? No, my dad was. Ah, so this is your family question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I knew a brother, I won't share his name, that an, uh, an experience in the heavenly realm came upon Mary, the mother of Jesus, and when he went up and greeted her, she began to weep. And she said, I am not a God. I am not to be prayed to. I am nothing but the handmaiden of the Lord. And they had, they've got to stop doing this because her heart, her heart was broken. Again, as he's beginning to research and write, that comes out of uh, ancient Babylonic practices and, and you know, ISIS and this, this whole thing. That was never a part of the true church until 325 when uh, Constantine, who was a sun worshiper and worshipped Jupiter and worshipped all of these false gods wanted to make one religion so he began to put them together and that's where the worship of Mary and later all, all these other practices came from so I have heard testimonies but not of death and coming back not near death experiences of Catholics but Catholics in in ecstasy or in trance have had those type of experiences but but, um, you, you know, the devil does that all the time. I would ask our brother that was here yesterday when he was in witchcraft. So if we don't adhere to the word, we can, we can go astray. Nowhere in there does it ever say to worship Mary, ever, anywhere. And so that's a dangerous place. And now, now let me say this too. 
I, for my my understanding and, and having been graced to travel some of the places I have, most of those I have found in the Catholic Church are truly seeking God. I mean, there, there's a they want they want it they want to connect and and I've I've ministered to and with Catholic priests and and bishops and cardinals that that really were hungry for God and they accepted Jesus so at that point it's not up to me to direct them how to comport themselves but we've got to understand I mean there are Muslims that are hungry for the reality of a living God every everything out there so but I, to me the most compelling uh, thing I had heard is that brother that had had that experience in heaven and she was weeping because it's apostasy okay what uh, but, thank you um, we have people uh, looking I mean, watching online so this is a question from a web streamer Oh, okay. Can Brother Sadhu speak about the vow needed to be made before one enters into ministry? Brother Vincent spoke of this recently. The vow? Vincent vow. Sukar? Well, if Brother Vincent spoke about the vow, they should ask him that question. No? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I do not know exactly what uh, respected prophet Vincent Selva Kumar is a dear friend of mine. I don't, I don't know what the message he preached about making a vow before the ministry. So I'm not the right person to answer the question since he is the one who preached that message. Thank you. Uh, can you clarify the timing of the book of Job? I have heard that that is uh, a book on a creation before Adam uh, fell more than the after and especially not applicable toward the New Testament in the timing of we know timing. The Bible tells us very clearly that Adam was the first born created being of God. So if the book of Job was written before Adam then Job becomes Job and his friends and the many people who lived during that time seems to be made before Adam. So that doesn't seem to add on. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is Job lived much more earlier before that period of time where the book was written. That I do know, but I do not know whether he was before Adam or not. No, they, um, from what I've studied, they, they say the earliest manuscript was possibly the book of Job, but that does not mean it was before Adam was on the earth. That just means it was a document that was written, the earliest document that was written, written that became the canon of strict scripture. And that might be what you're talking about.